We've been working in the 2D desktop GIS world for a few minutes. Let's take a look at some of the things you can do in the 3D environment. I've got a tool here called ArcGIS Explorer. It's a virtual globe, meaning that I can spin the globe, I can look at different data sets. Let's take a look at a local example. Remember we talked about geography being physical geography and also cultural or human geography. Let's start with cultural or human geography and look at an application there. Let's take a look at the distribution of two different kinds of businesses in a city. What I've got here are car washes in a medium-sized metropolitan area. In this case, Oklahoma City. You can see how the car washes are sort of spread out around the city. What about a different kind of business? What about bail bonds? Bail bond services are more clustered. Why is that? Let's take a look at the county penitentiary. i go there. Hmm. Interesting. A lot of the bail bond services are close to the county penitentiary, which makes sense once you study what bail bond services are. Car washes, on the other hand, are spread out all over but they do tend to be clustered toward the major arterials. Now let's illustrate another thing. Physical geography, but also current events. Not too long ago, about a month ago, there was a landslide in Washington State. So I was interested in finding out whether an article that I found in the newspaper uh, had any validity. The article said that there was a gravel pit that some folks thought caused the landslide by increasing the gradient of the slope. So I've got a state map here draped on the landscape from the Washington State Department of Natural Resources. So I'm going to zoom in here. Let's go ahead and tilt. Hmm. Okay, the gravel pit is here. The landslide was right here. As I browse up the valley, though, these look like anvils from old landslides and the landslide scars. I wonder if there's a fault running all the way down this valley. If so, then that casts some doubt on the newspaper article, doesn't it? If this is a landslide-prone region, maybe there was some small in some small way the gravel pit helped exacerbate an already existing condition or situation but now I'm investigating a real-world current event inside my 3d environment which is ArcGIS Explorer one more example using ArcGIS Explorer what I have here is watersheds and rivers. I downloaded those from the National Atlas. Let's zoom in on one of these watersheds. Let's say I'm teaching about watersheds and the relationship of hydro features or rivers, which I've got coded in blue here, and watershed boundaries, which are red. I'm looking at one watershed in Colorado. So with just a few clicks of the mouse, I can really see that the watershed boundaries um, encompass these river basins and they are affected by the mountain ridges. I could trace along these rivers and see what watersheds they eventually f f flow through. Another thing I can do is I can change the base map. Let's say I want to look at a topographic map. So I can change the base map so I'm not looking at the imagery anymore. Okay. I 
got sort of a shaded relief base as you can see here coming up are my topographic lines mm-hmm Very nice. You know what? My rivers were too thick. So I've just changed the size. I've decreased the size. So now I see these rivers flowing down these valleys and the whole river system bounded by these watershed boundaries, which, in the case of Colorado, are on the ridge tops. We've done a variety of things in 2D and 3D GIS. I hope that gives you a sense of the kinds of things that you can explore, the kinds of questions that you can ask about our changing planet. All of these things that we've done in the last few minutes really cut to the heart of what geography and geography exploration is. And that is asking questions about our world at all scales, across multiple themes in a holistic way, encompassing both the physical and the cultural or human aspects.